Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, uh, we will actually study the representations of SLN plus 1 C. So, we will use the notations that we developed in the last uh, lecture. So, let us actually recall uh, the very important uh, representation called adjoint representation. So, if we take uh, G to be SLN plus 1 C, then G acts on G via the add map. So, that gives you the adjoint representation. So, one can actually restrict that representation uh, and then make H acts on G. Okay. So, if you look at this action, then this action is indeed semi simple. Okay. So, what we mean by semi simple? So, each element of H must act must act uh, diagonalizably on the representation. And since uh, H is being abelian, so one can actually simultaneously uh, we can diagonalize uh, the action of H. Okay? That kind of action is called semi simple ac action. So, now uh, we have this action. So, so, this is acting semi simply. So, in particularly uh, if we take uh, uh, if you look at uh, the action and then see that uh, what will be the uh, simultaneous uh, eigenspace, which also will be called weight space. So, let us actually define. So, so it is clear that so G will be written as direct sum of G alpha, alpha coming from H star, where the G alpha is defined to be uh, simultaneous eigenspace for the action of H. So, this is those x in G such that the bracket H x is given by alpha of H x for all H in H. Okay. And of course, uh, I gave it left it as exercise, but let us just uh, work it out. Uh, so, if we take uh, these uh, uh, weights of this adjoint representation, which is those alpha in H star such that G alpha is being non-zero. So, this is going to be exactly equal to 0 union phi, where recall that phi is nothing but given by epsilon i minus epsilon j, where 1 listener equal to j listener equal to n plus 1. So, now uh, how one can verify this? So, note that uh, this uh, h is given by span of h i. Okay. So, to understand the action of h, it is enough to understand the action of h i for each i. So, recall h i is given by E i i minus E i plus 1 i plus 1. So, now if we take for example, some element inside this uh, h. So, then this h can be written as some a 1. So, maybe we can use epsilon i basis. Uh, sorry E i j basis, then the computation will be much more simpler. So, if we take h, so that is going to be a 1 e 1 1 plus etcetera plus a n plus 1 e n plus 1 n plus 1. Okay. So, this is going to be the h such that this a 1 plus etcetera plus a n plus 1 is given to be 0. So, the sum of the diagonal entries are 0. So, now, uh, if you take for example, uh, this uh, alpha inside phi okay, and then look at what will be the G alpha space. Let us call it alpha being epsilon i minus epsilon j. So, we can just simply assume that i is less than j. Okay. Uh, if i is greater than j, we can simply consider minus alpha. Okay. So, for alpha, so so, we are going to look at this uh, E i j. So, let us see how H acts on this E i j. So, if you do the computation, then you can easily see that this is H E i j minus E i j H. Now, H being the diagonal term. So, H is nothing but A 1 E 1 1 plus etcetera plus A n plus 1 E n plus 1 n plus 1. So, you can easily see that so, so only for for this product, a i e i i will survive. So, this thing will survive. So, this is going to give you 
E i times E i i times E i j which is uh, E i j. So, this is going to be A i E i j minus for this you will be getting contribution from E j j. So, you get A j E i j. So, then this is exactly A i minus E i j times E i j. But if you think about it, A i is nothing but i th projection of h. So, this is exactly epsilon i minus epsilon j acting on h E i j. So, this simple calculation tells you that these E i j they correspond to uh, the form epsilon i minus epsilon j. So, E i j indeed corresponds to the root epsilon i minus epsilon j. So, now uh, if you take elements of h then you can easily see that uh, uh, they all commute. So, in particularly the elements of h corresponds to the 0 uh, weight. So, indeed uh, this calculation simply says that uh, if you take this basis elements h i i range from 1 to n. So, this corresponds to the weight 0 and if you take this E i j for i not equal to j from 1 to n plus 1. So, this E i j corresponds to epsilon i minus epsilon. Since this will form a basis, so that actually proves the claim that we made. So, this claim follows from the fact that these elements will form a basis because they are all indeed uh, root vectors. So, since they form a basis, so that gives you that these are all the only roots. So, this is a basis of G. So, in particularly what we have, so we have this action of H that is semi simple and we also can actually simultaneously diagnose uh, the action of H. So, then we can talk about uh, this uh, root spaces with respect to that. And we observe that uh, those roots are actually has very, very explicit form. Okay. So, let us make one simple observation. So, this is something we made it already. So, SLN, SN plus 1 which is the group generated by this SI, okay, that is how we are identifying. So, this is naturally acting on this uh, set of roots phi. Okay. So, this is very important and the second thing the dimension of this uh, g alpha. So, that is 1 for all alpha in phi okay. and the dimension of g 0 which is the dimension of h. So, that is exactly m okay. and note that if we take okay, maybe you can take it as exercise. So, all elements in phi are indeed con S n plus 1 conjugate. That means, if you give any two elements in phi, you can find some S n plus 1 element that takes that takes one element to another element. Okay. So, this is indeed some important observation that we made about a joint representation and similar observation actually true, similar statements are true uh, for any finite dimensional representation. So, that is what we are ultimately going to prove. So, then the very first natural question, so what about the action of H on the any uh, given finite dimensional representation. So, let us actually look at it, look into it. So, let us start with V being just a finite dimensional G module. So, recall H is there. So, this is the carton okay, sitting inside G. Okay. So, what we will do? We restrict the action of, we restrict the action of G to H. So, that means I am looking at let us call this pi. So, this is the map from G to GL of V. I am restricting pi to H. So, you get a map from H to GL of V. So, if you take some x here, you can actually write this x V here. So, each element H in H and I am actually looking at the H V which is a map from V to V. 
okay so how it acts so we want to know okay to understand this of course we invoke the representation theory of sl2 and then use uh, uh, that information to conclude uh, everything about the action of h okay so recall that there is this natural subalgebra which is si so this is generated by xi and ya so which is isomorphic to sl2 of c and this is there for each i okay so what is xi xi is given by eii plus 1 and ya is given by ei plus 1i and the bracket being xi ya is exactly equal to hi which is eii minus ei plus 1i plus 1 so now what we do we take uh, this representation v and then restrict this to restrict this to si okay so then you can see that so this is indeed a representation for this sl2 copy and this is a finite dimensional representation so this becomes finite dimensional representation for Yes, okay. Now, since H i is actually plays the role of H in this uh, SL2 copy, so using the SL2 representation theory, we conclude the following. So, using the SL2 representation theory, we see that the action of H i on V is diagonalizable. And not only that, uh, any finite dimensional representation of SL2 is indeed uh, uh, completely reducible. So, it can be written as a direct sum of irreducible representation. For each irreducible representation, we know that the action of H actually the eigenvalues of H are integers. So, in particularly, so the eigenvalues that corresponds to this uh, operator H i, so that will be uh, integers okay so this is a and then b the eigenvalues of this operator hiv are integers okay so now since uh, hi acts uh, diagonalizably for each i and h being abelian so, you can easily conclude that uh, the action of H on V is uh, diagonalizable. Okay. So, since H is abelian and HI form of basis for H, we can conclude that the action of H on V is semi simple that means it is simultaneously diagonalizable. Okay. So, we have started with uh, uh, general finite dimensional uh, SLN plus 1 module and then we have concluded that the carton acts semi simply on that. So, in particularly we can talk about the weight space decomposition. So, that is the simultaneous uh, Eigen space decomposition. So, we can define this direct sum of V lambda lambda in H star. So, where this V lambda is given by those vector in V such that the action of H is given by lambda of H for all H in H. Okay. So, this is called weight space decomposition, weight space decomposition. And of course, generally V lambdas are called weight spaces, but we will be only interested in the spaces which are non-zero. So, that is why we can write down the weights to be uh, Wt of V. So, this is the set of weights, the set of weights of V to be the those lambda in H star such that this V lambda being non-zero. Okay. And for, for any given lambda in the weight, so the dimension of this V lambda, so this will be called the multiplicity. 
so this is the multiplicity of the weight lambda inside capital V ok. So, these multiplicities again play a very big role in the representation theory ok and uh, so these spaces V lambdas so they are called weight spaces. So, since we have fixed the carton we are not actually referring to uh, H weight space and so on we can simply call it as uh, weight space. So, now you can easily see that, uh, so what will be the like uh, Eigen value of H i ok. So, since we if, if you take some vector non-zero vector in V lambda ok for lambda in uh, the weight of V. So, we have ok, so what will be the action of H, H i on V. So, this is given by lambda of H i V ok. So, since uh, all the Eigen values of H i they are all integers we can conclude that. So, these are indeed integers. So, these are all integers ok. So, basically we are not interested in some general uh, forms that comes from H star. So, so we are interested in the forms on which for them like uh, lambda of H i must be integers. So, they are called integral weights ok. So, let us define this capital lambda. So, this is uh, those lambda in H star such that lambda of H i being integer for all i range from 1 to n. Indeed, what we proved? Uh, we proved that uh, if we take V is finite dimensional G module. So, then the weights of V is indeed subset of lambda. So, this is the immediate corollary ok. So, not only that uh, each uh, element of H acts diagnosably all the Eigen values of H must be integers ok. So, since uh, H spanned by this H i, so we have the simultaneous uh, uh, action ok. So, so that is what gives you the weight space uh, decomposition. So, we to understand given representation it is important to understand the weight space decomposition and uh, the weights that occur and the multiplicity that can actually uh, the dimension can take ok, the weight spaces can take. So, so we will see later that uh, indeed given any representation will be determined by uh, that particular information the set of weights and its multiplicities ok. So, here is uh, more observation. So, if we take uh, V being a uh, finite dimensional uh, G module. So, we already conclude that the weight of V must be uh, subset of lambda which is called the weight lattice. So, this is called the weight lattice. So, we can easily see that the cardinality of this uh, the set of weights of V must be finite. So, that is because V being uh, finite dimensional. So, if we take vectors from the different uh, weight spaces that that set must be actually linearly independent. So, that forces that the set of weights must be finite for any given representation finite dimensional representation V. So, now, uh, we will actually use SL2 representation theory to conclude uh, more about uh, uh, these weights. Uh, before that, let us actually see some examples. Uh, so, we can we already seen that if we take uh, the adjoint representation. So, take V being the adjoint representation. So, then the weights of V were given by 0 union phi given by the roots plus the 0. So, if you take the trivial representation V being a trivi the trivial representation, trivial one dimensional representation, then it is easy to see that the weight is just given by the 0 weight. 
and if you take uh, for example, the natural representation C power n. So, this is the natural representation then one can easily see that the weight of this is given by this epsilon 1 etcetera epsilon n plus 1. Okay, this is just comes from the matrix multiplication. So, if you take uh, uh, for example, this uh, h inside h and write it in terms of the epsilon i basis that means E i j basis. So, this is written by A 1 E 1 1 plus etcetera plus A n plus 1 E n plus 1 n plus 1. So, then this h and on E j. So, let us say E j is the standard basis. So, V is spanned by E j where j range from 1 to n. So, then this h E j if you just uh, this is the usual multiplication. So, this is the usual matrix multiplication. If you use that, then you can easily see that uh, this h e j is indeed given by a j e j. So, which is nothing but epsilon j of h e j. Okay. So, that is why you get uh, epsilon j's as weights of this v because e j's will form a basis for this uh, uh, natural representation. Okay. So, now uh, if you take the dual, I will leave it uh, you to check. Okay. So, if you take the dual of this natural representation, then the weight of that is going to be minus epsilon 1 etcetera minus epsilon n plus 1. Okay. Note that these representations are irreducible representations of g. Okay. So, we are going to make a proportion actually that is actually going to tell you uh, everything about the weights okay, uh, of all interesting representation that we have constructed so far. So, here is the proportion. So, if you start with the uh, finite dimensional representation, then uh, we have already seen that there are many ways to actually get new representation out of old representation. For example, we can take dual, we can take tensor products, we can take symmetric products, we can, al we can also take uh, alternating products and so on. Okay. So, it is natural to ask what will be the weights of this new representation in terms of the old one. So, let us make this observation. If you take V being finite dimensional uh, G module, so then uh, if you take uh, V star the weights of V star is going to be just minus lambda where lambda comes from the weight of V. Okay, it is basically minus weight of V. So, this is actually a quick check. Recall if you take uh, V in V lambda, X in G and F in uh, V star. Okay. So, let us yeah let us let us take. So, let us take x in g and then uh, so we want to conclude what is the v lambda star. So, let us do the computation. So, recall that x dot f defined on any v is going to be minus f of x v. Okay. In particularly, if v comes from v lambda, so then you can easily see that this x v is going to give you lambda. So, let us say h x is coming from h. So, then then x v is, is given by lambda x v. So, that should give you minus f of lambda x v. So, that lambda x v comes out then gives you minus lambda of x f of and since uh, so this is true for uh, v in v lambda okay 
So, you have to actually choose this dual basis and then uh, so you choose uh, this f actually let us say comes from the view mu star which is the dual. Okay. So, basically you have to fix the basis and then uh, take the dual basis of that and then work out this uh, thing. So, now okay, anyway whatever we did here indeed tells you that if you choose this f carefully from the dual basis uh, then this formula indeed tells you that uh, the weights of v star is exactly minus of weight v. Okay. And not only that uh, it is easy to see the dimension of this v lambda star is going to be exactly equal to the dimension of v minus lambda. Okay. So, I will leave it to you to check this. Now, if we take uh, the tensor product let us say v and v dash being finite dimensional g modules, then you can actually take the tensor v uh, tensor v dash and then look at it is uh, some mu uh, weight space, then this is going to be just direct sum of v gamma tensor v mu minus gamma where gamma runs over all h system. Okay. So, you basically take all possible tensors v gamma tensor v mu minus gamma where gamma running over h star you take all the direct sum of these tensors that is going to be your mu uh, weight space of v tensor v dash. So, one way to check is just start with the uh, basis of v comes from the weight space decomposition of v and then take uh, again basis of v dash that comes from the weight space decomposition of v. So, let us say that v i, so this is the basis of v comes from the weight space decomposition, weight space decomposition of, of v. What do you mean by that? Uh, you take this decomposition, v is written as direct sum of uh, v lambda, lambda comes from this h star. Now, you can choose a basis of v lambda and then put them together to get the basis of v that is the basis that we are talking about here. And if you take the v i to be the basis of v comes from this weight space decomposition and then w j being again the basis of v dash again comes from the weight space decomposition of v dash then it is not hard to see that v i tensor w j. So, this becomes a basis of v tensor v dash again this also comes from the weight space decomposition, weight space decomposition of this v tensor v dash. So, what is the weight of this? So, if you take x in h and then compute how x acts on v i tensor w j. So, since it is acts as derivation, so it is v x v i tensor w j plus v i tensor x w j. So, now you can easily see that x v i is given by lambda of v i sorry lambda of x v i. So, if v i comes from let us say v lambda and then w j comes from v dash mu, then x w j is given by mu of x w j. So, if you use that here then it is exactly lambda plus mu of x v i tensor w j. So, in particularly the weight of this tensor v i tensor w j is lambda plus mu. So, v i tensor w j sits inside v tensor v dash lambda plus mu. Okay. So, this tells you that all these are weight vectors and since that form a basis for this tensor product, so that actually tells you that uh, we have this decomposition. Okay. So, this way uh, we are actually getting uh, some information about the weights of uh, this dual tensors and so on uh, using the weights of V. So, I will leave it to you to think about uh, what will be the weights of uh, uh, symmetric product and uh, 
alternative product and so on. So, here is the third statement suppose V dash is a sub module then what happens it is a G sub module maybe you, sh you should take it as exercise then it is easy to see that this V dash is written as direct sum of V lambda intersection V dash where lambda runs over H system. Okay. So, where V is given by this weight specific composition V equal to direct sum of V lambda lambda in H system. So, if you know the weight space decomposition of uh, uh, capital V, then from that you can actually get the weight space decomposition of V dash by just taking the intersection. Okay. So, this is a simple exercise uh, that you can actually do. Okay. So, I will actually stop here. Mm, so, we will continue with the uh, discussion of uh, this uh, final dimensional representation of SLN plus 1 in the next class. Thank you. I will stop here.